author of Inspired Blessings, led by God to inspire the world with love, faith, and hope. And I want to thank you so much for joining me today on my first TV show called Inspired Blessings with Jean Marie Prince. God has blessed me with an opportunity to share what He has done in my life and in the life of others. I'm going to explain what my TV show will be about so you understand why I was inspired to do this. When I was watching the news last year, I would hear about devastating stories such as a typhoon in the Philippines, tornadoes in the United States, 30 school shootings in America in 2013, and that was 13 months after the Newtown School tragedy and the Boston Marathon bombing. And that is only to name a few. The loss of life is too many to keep track of. I wonder how many people fear just walking out their front door. But God does not want that for us. In Isaiah 41.10, in the Bible, it says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Let some people blame God for this, and I hope through my TV show, you can understand why things happen and what our purpose is. God willing, I will be having some inspiring guests from time to time that will give their testimonies about their trials and in life and the trials they endured. And in the end, they realized that they were not alone and found their faith through the situation. I will have different guests who started organizations to help others. And maybe you can use their help as well. So I feel led to give people hope in a world of uncertainty, faith, believing the things not seen, and revealing God's love for those who feel unloved. God willing, I have been given a purpose and a mission, and that is why I'm speaking to I you. I want to today. share about who I am and why I feel led to do this. I am an ordinary person with many imperfections, and I'm not sinless. I don't know everything, and I'm not a scholar of the Bible, but I do know that I'm a child of God. And when I look at nature, how our body works, all the different species of animals and the birds of the air, how a flower blooms that confirms the existence of an intelligent designer, to me, that is God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. I will share my faith with anyone who is willing to listen, and I'm always willing to take a leap of faith rather when I feel it in taking that leap of faith than to never do what God was asking of me. He saved me both physically and spiritually and the right thing that I could do is to be obedient to Him. Again, I am not perfect and I fail at times. But thank God by His grace and mercy, He still loves me. Being on my TV show, speaking with you today I would have never have known that this was possible if I feared taking the step of faith. My life started when I was left in a public bathroom in Seoul, Korea at two days old, all alone, not realizing that my biological parents chose to discard me. Mm -hmm. But God spared my life and had a stranger or an angel to bring me to Holt Orphanage. They are a Christian organization. I was blessed that they prayed for me while I was living there for the first five years of my life. I am not sure if my name is Mi Ra or Mi Ray Park. I was finally blessed to be adopted to an American family with an Irish mother and an Italian father from Long Island, along with four new instant brothers. This was my new mother father and four new brothers. We were all very excited about our new family. Growing up Asian had made my life difficult at times. I got more into detail of how this affected me in my book. I was also searching for the truth of God's existence and it was a challenge. Then it finally all came together that my eyes were open to the reality of the truth of Jesus Christ. Rather than me sharing my full story, I wrote it in my book. I think it would be better for you to read it since it is interesting and goes more into detail. 
I want to explain what my book, Inspired Blessings, Led by God to Inspire the World with Love, Faith, and Hope is about. I was blessed to get the Indie Excellence National Finalist Award for Short Stories 2012. The reason why I wrote this book is because of a miracle. One day in the fall of 2010, I was walking in the parking lot and all of a sudden I heard, do the book. Immediately I responded with, you're right, that makes sense. I know in my soul that it was God who spoke to me. Then I had the nerve to even start my first YouTube video telling people that God told me to do the book. I should have been scared, but ironically, I did not even think about it, and I just took a huge leap of faith. But God showed me that this was not impossible for Him. I self-published my book, and it came out a year later in December 2011. So as of now, I have 32 YouTube videos from the beginning journey of Inspired Blessings, as I did radio and TV interviews, many book signings and speaking engagements, and so on. I was blessed to be on the Donna Drake Live It Up TV show and also spoke at Samantha's Little Bit of Heaven in East Northport. I also did a book signing at Cross Words and Gifts in Ronkonkoma. This book signing was at Connections Cafe Bible Bookstore in South Leamington, New Jersey. This book signing was at Barnes & Noble in East Northport, New York. I was interviewed on the radio with Pastor Richard Anderson from WLIX, which you will find on my website. There is a past history with Inspired Blessings as inspirational writings. There are four themes in my book, and the first theme is how God told me to do the book with no formal writing experience and no college education. I started the book explaining in 1998. I was laying in bed with my kids one morning, and I started singing. I love this picture of Dylan when he was in preschool. Chelsea and Dylan look so cute. Can you imagine if he lost? Thank you, God, for Chelsea and Dylan. So then I said, hey, let me write down what I'm singing. And that morning I wrote down little five short prayer songs. Little did I know, but that was the birth of Inspired Blessings. I elaborate how God had blessed me to write over 100 inspirations and how I had over 60 stores selling my inspirations framed and it went as far as Wisconsin and le in less than two years. Having no writing experience, this was a true miracle. I go more into details how God spoke to me and at other times giving me direction to pursue His will. I would have never imagined that I would ever have been an author one day or have my own TV show. This is so far from who I thought I would ever be. I was just an average student and English was my weakest subject. The second theme is about me having no mother to love me or a father to give me a hug. I was left all alone in the strange darkness. How I ended up coming to America and almost died. My new family in the United States. Challenges, disappointments, blessings of my own family. I am thankful that my husband Mark is such a hard worker and allows me to do the things that I'm passionate about. Unbelief and finding real faith in Jesus Christ. The third theme is how I take 40 inspirations out of 100 that God blessed me with to write. I explain why I was inspired to write them or who or what inspired me. I wrote an inspiration called Let Us Seek the Truth after Columbine High School Tragedy. After September 11th called Tragedy in Our Nation. On my website, gmarieprints.com, you will see over 100 inspirational prints. And our firemen and the brave heroes of the armed forces. God blessed me to take all of my inspirational pictures. Hearing about people committing suicide inspired me to write, Ending Your Life Isn't the Answer. For someone who is contemplating abortion, I wrote, For I'm Not Even Born. I addressed many deep topics and the trials of life and how God can help you through your trials. The fourth theme, I had interviewed 14 people and wrote their true stories that range from mothers who desperately wanted to have children but medically were not able, but God does the most spectacular miracles in their lives. How about a mother who had to overcome the challenges of an alcoholic, gambler, a drug-addicted husband while raising her children? 
That is when her faith became a reality of the true existence of God in her life. I wrote a story about a lady who believed that Jesus was going to heal her. But before being put under anesthesia in the operating room, she held her mom's hand during one last prayer. Rosemary said to God, Okay, Lord, if this is the way you choose, that is fine. But you said that I was healed. Then a miracle happens. We are not expected to do it all alone, but for some reason the world says that we use God as a crutch. Well, what is wrong with that? If God who created the heavens and the earth, the things seen and unseen, I would want him to be my crutch for me to lean on every day. He knows what our needs are, but sometimes he knows when the perfect time would be to fulfill our needs. I would like to read just one review out of the seven in my book, and it's from um, Pastor Gary Zarlingo. He's the senior pastor of Smithtown Gospel Tabernacle. And it says, I pray God's rich blessing and favor on you and in this endeavor to please God. Advance his kingdom and minister encouragement, hope, comfort, and life to many who will read this excellent book of your testimony and that of others whom God has placed in your life. He has blessed you with the gift of writing and poetry. What a wonderful tool to share how Jesus changes lives and our need to place our faith and trust in him. I will be reading one inspired blessings, inspirations during the show, and I will be having different guests from time to time to share their stories of what God has done in their life. Some may have challenges, trials that seem unmovable, might have had a near-death experience, or dealing with the loss of a loved one, or might have witnessed miracles, and much more. I know that life is not guaranteed for any one of us. I will also be having guests sing some of my inspirations that I was blessed to have written with melodies. I had a musician from Israel put music to my melodies and lyrics and what a blessing it will be to hear it all come together. So ponder some of these questions. Do you have the answers? Are you happy with your life? Do you feel that something is missing? Do you think that there may be a greater purpose for your life? Have you searched in many directions and still not sure what life is about? What really happens after you die? Is it possible that something came out of nothing? Does that seem logical? Is committing suicide really going to solve the problem of your unhappiness? Do you really know what happens to your soul if you end your life? Should you even take that chance? Are you expected to take on your burdens all by yourself? Why do you find it so hard to forgive others? Does your pride and your one-way heart really build a wall of unforgiveness. Is this really good for your heart and soul? Is having the overabundance of the finer things in life worth the sacrifice of compromising your ethics and or time with your family? Why is marriage so hard when you are not equally yoked? Why is the most popular Bible verse John 3.16? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son so that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. What does God mean by perish? And is everlasting life possible? Isn't just being a good person enough to get to heaven? So why do pastors say that in the Bible it says, in order to get into the kingdom of heaven, we must repent for our sins and believe in Jesus Christ? Why did he really die for all of us that believe in him? Do your children really need to have God in their life? Why are children killing children? Why does the loss of a loved one hurt so much? Why did they have to die? Isn't God a loving God, so why would he do this? Do you have a lot of questions that you would like answered? I hope with God's blessings that my show will address different topics and give you the faith to finally believe what you cannot see and that the love of God is real. By chance? or by design. God blessed me to take this picture in Mexico and that's my book cover. Only God can create something out of nothing. Don't let anyone else fool you. What do you think? I want to share one of my blogs on my website at jmarieprince.com. Does your faith increase when there is a trial? 
You may never have asked to be tested with a trial, but sometimes it's part of life. Have you seen the terrible, devastating things on the news? That breaks your heart. Trials of mass destruction that are sometimes hard to fathom. Accidents on the local news that makes you wonder, is it someone that I know? There are no guarantees these days that the world is safe. When you have been confronted with trials, has your faith increased or decreased? My pastor, Gary Zarlingo, shared in his sermon about a man named Horatio G. Spafford. He was a man of God and trusted in his Creator throughout his life. Most likely, Horatio never thought that his faith would be tested in such a way. In 1860s, Horatio and his wife Anna had five children, four daughters and one son. His son died at four years old from scarlet fever, and that broke Horatio's heart. He was a wealthy man, but disaster struck again. Most of their real estate holdings burnt up in the Chicago Fire in 1871. In 1873, he planned on going to Europe with his wife, four daughters. At the last minute, he was not able to go because he had to take care of an urgent business matter. So Horatio sent his wife and four daughters ahead aboard a steamer. He was planning on joining them as soon as he was able to. But the steamer collided with an iron sailing ship, taking his four daughters last breath into the deep ocean. When his wife arrived in Wales, she sent a telegraph to her husband that she was saved alone. What shall I do? He left immediately from Chicago to bring his wife home from across the Atlantic Ocean. While on board, the captain from the ship called Horatio to the bridge. He was informing him that the ship was going over the place where the steamer entered into the deep depth of the ocean. Knowing the feeling of loss, he penned the words to his famous hymn, It is well with my soul. That is real faith, never blaming God, but accepting what was given to him. His story also reminds me of Job in the Bible, another man of God. He lost everything, all of his children died, his wealth was destroyed, and his body was full of boils. His wife cursed God, his friends were not encouraging, but Job never cursed God. His faith again showed how he trusted in God, knowing that God created him. And if this was God's will for him, so be it. After hearing about Horatio and knowing the story of Job, my trials have been minor. God willing, I will never be tested like that. I know I have found my faith to increase and at times decrease when I question God's will for me. So instead, I think to myself that God has a better plan for me, even if I cannot see it now. I know you and I need trust in God, then he will make the way. I hope you see that God loves you and he does have a plan for your life. Going through trials will help you to see what you are made of. It will also let you know if your faith is weak. Your faith can be seen by others in the way you deal with unforeseen situations. I cannot tell you how to increase your faith, but I can tell you to read in the Bible how some of God's people trusted in Him. Trust is such a powerful word that can lighten your burdens onto someone else. God tells you in His Word, 1 Peter 5, 7. Cast all your anxiety on Him because He cares for you. Philippians 4, 6-7. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I will read you one of my inspiration that pertains to what I have been speaking about, faith being tested. GMarieprince.com and BlessedToInspire.com when a trial comes into your life as an unexpected guest, do you really have the faith to believe and to endure the test? Your faith will be tested in ways that seem unimaginable. At times it's even harder to comprehend the meaning of it. Your mind is confused, trying to analyze everything that is unknown, wondering if you can stop the test, realizing that your faith is weak. You're not expected to do it all by yourself. Don't let pride make you fail. God allows trials to happen in your life to see if you're willing to grow. His timing may not be on your calendar, 
but it was on his before you were born. He is waiting for you to call out his name so you can receive his power. And he will strengthen you in your trial with his love and grace. Then you will see miracles in your life that seem impossible for man. Your faith is tested to see if you have the conviction to believe. Faith is invisible to the eyes, and it is not always easy to have. But with God's power, it becomes real for all who know that God can make all things possible. He knows what our heart desires, and there is nothing that is kept secret from Him because we are His children. Take the time to see the greater purpose of your trial by being patient and waiting upon the Lord for the blessings that He will give you because you really did have the faith to believe. You can learn more about who I am and what my book is about and on my website at jmarieprince.com and also blessed to inspire.com. I want to thank my sponsors and especially Dora for the beautiful silk flowers that she has donated for my set. Thank you so much for joining me today and I hope you continue to watch my show so you will be inspired. I've always ended my YouTubes with my tagline so now I will end my TV show with the same. Keep inspired blessings within arm's reach to help give you comfort when others are at a loss for words. God bless. Thank you. Philippians 2, 10 to 11 That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Accept and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Please say this prayer. I know that I am a sinner who needs forgiveness. Jesus, please forgive me for all my sins and purify me. I know that you died and rose again to pay for my sins. I need you to be my Lord and Savior for the rest of my life. Thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. With man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible.